peace and blessings to you all. Let me welcome you to another spiritual vitamin service on this day, February 26, 2023. You have another chance at life. Be thankful. Have an attitude of gratitude. Thank God for blessing you to wake up this morning. Thank God for providing for you food, clothing, and shelter. For there are those that do not have that. There are those that are less fortunate than you. So just lift your hands up and give God a hallelujah praise that is worthy of his blessings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For God has an expectancy of you. His expectancy is that you will praise and worship him all the days of your life. Now, you, those of you that know me, you know I have a radical praise. I am very dramatic on that pulpit. I am very dramatic if I'm not on the pulpit, whether I'm in church, at home, whether I am doing the spiritual vitamin service, I give God a radical praise with enthusiasm because I mean it in my heart. He expects you to love him with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So just be thankful. Thank God, have an attitude of gratitude. And I got a wonderful spiritual vitamin uh, service for you today, and it is on kindness. Be kind, no matter what the situation is. Be kind to all, be kind to all that you do. Kindness will take you further than you could even imagine. Be kind to one another. And I have one spiritual vitamin uh, for you today that will go along with this message. I hope it's gonna be a quick and short message, but an effective message that is for the edification for all of those who listen. So quickly, let's bow our head and close our eyes. Father God, we give thanks to you for all matters of life and all things. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your protection, direction, instruction, and counsel. I ask you, Father God, that you will reanoint those that are watching, Father God, and those that watch the pre-recorded message. Reanoint them with a refreshed and renewed spirit of life. Reanoint them with a new anointing upon them, a fresh and renewed and overflowing, Father God overflowing so that as you pour into them, Father God, they can pour into others. I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Father God, and be of edification for all of those who listen. In the name of Yahshua, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, and amen. We lift up the triune spirit of God upon each and every one of you and upon the world. Because this is a worldly message. It's not just a community message. It's a worldly message. And I want to talk about kindness. I want to talk about kindness because no matter what the situation is, no matter what you're going through, no matter how someone offends you, God says that we are supposed to, first and foremost, we're supposed to forgive those who have offended us, who have committed an act against us to forgive even our enemies. He says we are to love even our enemies. And God says if they offend you a million times, you are to forgive them a million times. Forgiveness is not always for the other person, but it's for you to relieve you of the prisoner of your own mind, of the torment of your heart, mind, body, and soul, to, to, to release that anger, to let it go, to not harbor bitterness, to, to not allow that hurt, that trauma that is inside of you, that you have been offended, that offense to be rooted deep down inside of you and become an ingram. An ingram is a deep hurt and trauma that is rooted deep, 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 deep down inside of you. So you want to release it by being forgiven and, and by being kind. A gentle answer will calm a person's anger, but an unkind answer will cause more anger. And, you know, you may be in a relationship. You may be in a relationship, uh, or, or you may be married, and you, your husband or your wife are, are, are contentious. Or they don't even have to be contentious. You get into a disagreement. That disagreement becomes an argument. It becomes a spark, it becomes a fire, it becomes a flame, and then it's blazing. And it all depends on how you react to something that someone says to you that may offend you or that you don't like. Because 
if I was to walk up to you and call you a knucklehead, call you a, 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 a cuss word, whatever it may be, uh, you're going to get offended. And you're going to call me a name back. Most of, most of you will because you have not trained yourself to be kind. You have not trained yourself to be silent. You have not trained yourself and disciplined yourself. That's the word I really mean, not trained, but disciplined yourself to not respond to negativity. Negativity is contagious. Negative words is contagious. Negative thinking can be contagious. Energy is transferable. So you have to be really, really, really careful of, of how you think, how you react, what you believe, what you say out of your mouth. You have to be wise and you have to be careful and you have to remain calm. Remaining calm comes with discipline. You're really training yourself to be disciplined. And the only way that you can be disciplined is you have to seek the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Be kind to one another. Have a gentle and, and, and quiet spirit. Be patient with one another. For love is patient and love is kind. Love is kind. Love is God's greatest attribute and it's kind. Be kind to one another. If your husband or your wife says something to you that is offensive and you do not have uh, the discipline to have emotional intelligence, to remain calm, then it's going to turn into that spark, that fire, that flame, and that blaze. It's going to get out of control, and you will have havoc in your life. You will have havoc in your home. The enemy will be, be able to come upon you in your presence very easily, and that negativity, that negative energy, that dark spirit, it will spread, it will transfer to you, and you will walk around with a hardened heart. You will walk around bitter, and bitterness can be self-destructive. So you want to train yourself, discipline yourself to be kind. Be kind. Have you said a kind word to someone today? Have you said something kind to your spouse, to your children, to your neighbors? Have you did a kind act? Have you... Uh, uh, giving something to someone today. Maybe it could be a, a, a bus pass. Maybe it could be buying something in the store or, or, or a cup of coffee. It could be uh, maybe just a pat on the back, a hug, telling somebody that you love them, telling uh, someone you haven't been getting along with. It don't have to be a family member. It could be so, uh, a, a friend or an old friend, a gesture of just saying, I love you. Be kind to one another. Kindness, kindness will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour upon you more kindness. That's what you will attract to you because as you think it, as you do, as uh, the fruits of your labor, as you speak, that's what you will attract to you. You will attract negativity to you if you are putting out negativity. You will attract positiveness to you if you are putting out positiveness. If you are acting evil, you will attract darkness to you. You will attract uh, the, the enemy to you. That evilness, that wickedness will bring about the dark spirits of Satan himself upon you. But if you are, uh, are, are practicing goodness and kindness and love and gentleness, you will attract positive energy. You will uh, attract the angels of the Lord upon you. They will take up residence in your home. You have to practice kindness. You have to practice love and patience. But in it, say discipline, discipline. Listen to me, folks. This is the spiritual vitamin that I want to give you. It's Ephesians 4, 31, 32. It says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speak and be put away from you along with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgiven you for God's sake, even as Christ for God's sake has forgiven you. I am telling you folks, be kind to one another. Practice kindness, practice justice of kindness. You want your life to change? You want Joy within yourself. Most of you are seeking joy in other people. You're, you, you're, you're so bitter and you're so uh, unhappy. You're bitter because someone has caused you pain in your life. You've been through a storm. You may be experiencing financial hardship. You may be experiencing de depression. You may might have lost a loved one. 
or you, you're just going through a broken relationship, you went through a divorce, you might have lost your job and you're bitter, you're bitter, you're bitter, and you're harboring bitterness. And every time something like that happens that you feel is a loss, when actually God is removing you and taking you out of one situation because he's ready to elevate you and put you in another situation that is higher on a higher level. He removed me from a lot of jobs in my life and each job he removed me from, I was patient and he opened up greater doors of opportunity. He removed me out of relationships and each and every time he has given me a better relationship. He has removed me from situations, people, places, and things that I, of course, I'm human. I'm a man and I, 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 I have emotions and, and I felt it at the time. But I always knew and I always said to God, I don't know what you're doing, Lord, but I trust you. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in God. Trust in God. He is still in control. Are you a believer? Do you love him? Do you trust him? Do you have faith? And if you don't, then ask God for an increased measure of faith. But by all means, Ephesians 4, 31, 32, let all bitterness, let it go. That bitterness is self-destructive. Let all bitterness and wrath, your wrath. God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay, says the Lord. You don't have to get even with someone. You don't have to come down on them because they did something. They stole some money from you or, or some jewelry or belonging or, or they... Uh, did something harmful to you, they, they cheated on you, they slept with your husband or your wife or whatever they did. You don't have to get even. Whatever the case may be, somebody at work played dirty politics on you and got you fired, got you demoted. You don't have to bring your wrath upon them for God's wrath is greater than any wrath that you could possibly bring upon them. You don't have to go out there and kill them because they broke up with your sister or, or they made your daughter cry. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, anger, don't hold on to anger. The Bible said, don't go, let the sun go down by, by being angry and still be angry. Don't be angry, don't let it steal your joy. Whatever you're going through, do not let it steal your joy. Don't seek joy in other people. Seek the joy within yourself. The word blessed means divine joy. Divine joy, love, peace, and happiness. That is the word blessed. That's what it really means in the Hebrew, in our original our, our, our African and Arabic language. You can look it up in several different cultures of language, and you will find that it means divine joy. Emphasize with joy, divine love, peace, happiness, and joy. Emphasize with joy. Are you blessed? Do you want to be blessed? Listen to me. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, yelling, always yelling, contentious, arguing, always finding something to argue about. 75% of an argument is how you respond. So my brothers, your woman, your woman is very emotional by nature. She leans on you for support to help her to manage her emotions. So you can't start yelling back at her because she yells at you. You can't offend her because she has offended you. You have to remain the calm one. You have to remain the strong one because she's leaning on you for strength. She's leaning on you to be strong. She's hoping on you to be strong. She needs that security. My brothers, it's not easy, but you have to discipline yourself to do it. Discipline. Practice. Practice. It takes practice. You have to train yourself to do it. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speak. And watch what you speak out of your mouth. Someone calls you the B word, you call them the M and F -er word. And then they call you another word and you're going here and here and here and you're just out of control. You're both, both out of control. Control, self-control, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Manage your own emotions so that you can help to manage the emotions of your spouse. 
my brothers, you got to do it. You got to practice it. You have to discipline yourself to do it. It's a discipline that takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. You learn that behavior that you have, and you sisters too, you learn that behavior over a course of a lifetime. So it's not going to happen overnight that you unlearn how to not let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speak and be put away from you along with all malice. Trying to get even with somebody, doing stuff on purpose, malice. Purposely trying to cause them harm. Purposely setting somebody up and malice. And be ye kind to one another. Be kind. Be kind. Practice that word. Kind, kind, kindness. Be ye kind to one another. Tender hearted. Man, it doesn't make you any less of a man to be tenderhearted. I love being tenderhearted. I'm not letting nobody bring me down to their level. This young lady at the gym said to me the other day, she said to me, I'm dating that guy over there. She said, but I want to let him go. She said, you know what? I heard you was a pastor, and I just want to ask you, what do you think I should do? I said, follow your heart. I said, why do you want to let him go? She said, because he's mean to me. He's not kind. He treats me like crap. She said the S word. But I said, well, what is your heart telling you? I said, because you have a womanly intuition. Your womanly intuition is a very, very powerful and strong intuitive energy level, intuitive energy level. You, it, it is by nature that God gave that to you. Now combine that with the power of the Holy Spirit which leads us and talks to us and through us and lets us know about all things and you can't go wrong. She said, no, I think what I need to do is like what my oldest sister told me to do. She said, I got to be mean back to him. And if he's mean to me, I got to be meaner. And I got to, I got to call him an M and F. I got to do. I said, whoa, sister. I said, you got it twisted. I said, no, you be kind. She said, no, no, Pastor Willie, no, that's not the way. She said, men don't understand nothing. But if you're mean to them, then they understand and they give in. Now, I don't know what that is, if that's of this new generation or what, but that does not, that would never work with me. The first sign of a contentious person, a contentious woman, I'm running for the hills. If I cannot help you to overcome and to see that you're contentious, that you have a problem with confliction and that, that you think that that's right, Oh, no, that will not work with me. I could only imagine that it would not work with any man of sound mind, body, soul, and spirit. Sisters, if that's the way you're thinking, I don't know if you are or not, but that happened just the other day when this young lady came up to me and, and she expressed that to me. That's very troublesome. And I'm wondering about this new generation that we are in, that we have here upon us. Are they all thinking that way? Are all women thinking that way? My brothers, we have to be leaders. Sisters, some of you sisters that are leaders, some of you sisters that are strong-minded and strong-willed and have a quiet and gentle spirit, and your husband may not be there yet. He may be very argumentative himself. Take it upon yourself to practice discipline, to zip it, to, to not lash back out because once again, 75% of the argument is in the response. 75% of the conflict is in how you respond. If someone came and hit you, slapped you in the face, this is why Jesus Christ said, turn the other cheek. He says, turn the other cheek if they hit you. If someone hit you and you hit them back, now you're in battle because they're going to go to hit you back. Now you're fighting. If you turn the other cheek and walked away, say, I'm a, you got a free pass on this one and walked away. <laughs> now that is hard to do because I honestly, and, and what I'm saying is 100% right. If I walked away, if you walked away, you're not going to have a problem. That person will probably, more than likely, unless they're just automatically targeting you and saying, I'm going to beat this person down. If that was a spontaneous slap in your face and you walk away, you're not going to have no problem. You'll, you'll walk away peacefully. 
But if you engage in battle, now you're at war and now you're fighting. And now whoever wins, more than likely, if you beat that person down or they beat you down, you're going to want revenge. So once again, it's hard to do. I don't know if I'm there with that one yet myself, because if a man put his hands on me, then we God gave me hands to battle. So I, I have to say that if a man put his hands on me, I am going to try to knock his block off. I'm trying to knock him out. I'm going to hit him with the power and grace of God Almighty. Mm. But if a woman hit me, I'm not going to hit a woman. I can't hit a woman. I got to walk away peacefully. I'm not going to call her names. I'm not going to yell at her. I'm not going to say, I'm going to say, what are you doing? Why would you do that? And I'm going to walk away peacefully, peacefully. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaker be put away from you along with all malice and be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Be kind. Go out and uh, do a kind act this week. Let this be kind act week for you. All of you that listen to this message, just do a random act of love, a random act of kindness with somebody today. If you're going to Dunkin' Donuts and you're buying your coffee, say, I want to buy that coffee up, uh, for that man behind me. Give him a coffee for whatever you want, and I'm going to pay for it now. Just do something randomly. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just using that for an example. Something randomly. If you're in the store and somebody's buying something, one or two items, just say, can I pay for that particular item for them? Just do something randomly. Watch God just pour upon you more and more blessings as you continue to do that more and more. God bless you all. I love you all, and I hope to see you back next week. God bless you.